So this slide just summarises the relationship between sample size, power and the difference that can be detected. So the bigger the sample size, then the more power it's going to give you and the smaller the difference between the groups that can be detected. Although you can base your calculations on calculating the power under different situations or the difference that you can detect under different situations, I mean, the better way to do it, if you can, is to decide what your power is, decide what the difference is, and get your sample size and say, OK, I need, I don't know, 15 mice per group and just run with that, although it's not always a practical way to proceed sometimes. The other thing it's quite useful to do is look at different scenarios. So look at different sizes of difference that might be detected. We just looked at 0.5, but you might want to sort of think, well, if the difference was this big or 0.2 or if it was one, how many mice per group would I need? And so you can look at what you need for different levels of power. And if you wanted to detect 0.4, you would need 20 mice per group. If you wanted to detect a difference of not just 0.2, a very small difference, you're going to need 80 mice per group for 90% power. So that's perhaps getting quite unrealistic. It can be helpful to sort of look at different situations. Another thing people sometimes do is a, what they might call a power analysis. So calculate the power under different situations and sometimes even do a sort of plot of what the power is depending on what the, the sample size is. So using the formulae rearranged in terms of power, we'll look at that for both different numbers of mice per group and different effect sizes. So if we're in the situation where we've got, we're interested in effect size of 0.6 in red blood cell count, we vary the number of mice per group, then you can see what the power of the study would be. If you've only got five mice per group, the power of the study would be just 68%. So you'd have 68% chance of getting your result significant, 32% chance that it wouldn't be significant. But that quickly increases with the number of mice and by the time you've got 10 mice then it's quite an acceptable power. Power is very low if you're looking at a small effect size, as low as 13%, really not worth doing the study in fact for any of these group sizes. So um, would up to 20 mice even, the study would be quite underpowered to detect a statistically significant difference. So in fact sometimes people talk about rather than sample size calculation, they sort of talk about power analysis or calculation, but I prefer talking about sample size calculation because I think that is, if you can do it that way, that's the better way to do it. I've seen it done with people reviewing studies, you know, that maybe haven't got a statistically significant result and they said, well, there's no difference between this and this. But by looking at how powerful that study was, it's, it makes it easier to interpret so if you can say, well, the study didn't really, it lacked the power to show a difference of this size, so we can't conclude that there isn't a difference. So that's another way power calculation we can, can be used. You know what the variability of the data observed are, and you can put it into a calculation and show how powerful the study was to achieve its objectives. So that can be quite useful as well. Thinking about sort of looking at different scenarios, different um, sizes of data set, instead of getting the power, you can say, well, for a given amount of power, what sort of difference am I likely to detect? So here we're calculating the difference in red blood cell count that could be calculate, that could be obtained with different numbers of mice per group. So with 80% power, difference is quite high with just five mice. We can't detect the 0.5, but we could detect the 0.69. When we go up to 20 mice, we can do a lot more, we can detect a difference of 0.35, so the study becomes more powerful. It's really just to show this flexibility in different ways you can look at the sample size calculation and you can do it in terms of differences and in terms of power quite easily.